styling fall outfits, what I did this week in New York City, some fabulous fashion finds, and do we all really look the same or is it just what we see on social media? Let's discuss. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shakura and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. I do a lot of talking about personal style and how to use your debt and taking a piece of clothing and styling it different ways. And if there's one thing that I love to talk about and love to see is that how three different people can take one style element and style it so many different ways. The clear reoccurring style element in these three outfits is a navy blue pinstripe. Whether it's a navy blue pair of pants, a full pantsuit, or a full skirt suit. The different way to style and the creativity that is used for this one element is just fantastic in my opinion. I love to see variety when I'm looking at fashion. We are different people. We all shouldn't look exactly the same, right? What's fantastic about these three looks is that they are very easy to recreate. I love that with this outfit, she is wearing different tones of brown. And I talked about this before in another video that though matchy matchy is fine and it looks beautiful in many different outfits, I'm finding that I am really gravitating towards the outfits that are not exactly matchy matchy, even though, like I've said, I've been known to do that, but there's something a little more elevated and a little more effortless that I'm noticing that goes with things that go together, but don't necessarily match exactly. So she has on blue and brown. The browns are all different shades. The bag is different from her shoes, the shoes, the belt, the blazer. I just love this. I think it's a very smart, pulled together, cute type of. I love that this suit went from corporate to streetwear, right? Just by adding a really good green hat. I also love that she used green because she could have used black or beige. I love that there's a pop of color. The use of this Chanel chain belt gives it a little more extraness, right? It's not just any chain belt, it's Chanel, darling. <laughs> and then kind of grounding the look with this Bottega clutch it's in a very neutral color. What really changed this look is the use of her accessories. Imagine she used that belt as the necklace and got rid of the hat. It would be a whole different look. I really feel like this way makes the suit a little more lighthearted and a little more fun. And then this gorgeous woman with the skirt suit, I mean, fabulous. What I love about what she did here was that she added some texture and some depth to this outfit with using a blue striped button up. She could have easily gone with a white bodysuit or a white button up, but by adding the blue stripes against the pinstripes, it gave it a little more depth and a little more contrast. Even though it's not a huge difference, it does give that outfit a little more something. And then this beautiful top handled red bag with the matching lipstick. I mean, sis, fabulous. The pointy toe heels, the delicate gloves, the statement earrings with her hair pulled back. Fabulous. So good to me. All different personalities, all extremely fabulous. So if you want to create these looks, there are a plethora of options right now. Not only is this blue pin stripe trending and it's easy to find, which is making it easier to find, it's also a classic, right? Just like with a lot of the trends from this year, the suede and the leopard print, these are classic things that are already in our closet most of the time. So because it's easy to find, they come in various price points. First of all, if you don't want to spend too much, this one from Target will give you a very similar vibe. It's very, very affordable. This one from Saks All Fifth, also a good price. Not as affordable as the one from Target, but still very affordable. But if you want to spend a little more money and invest into your wardrobe, something like this from Favorite Daughter, J. Crew or Sandro will do the trick. This Sandro one is actually on the outnet for a lot cheaper than what it usually sells for. So if you are interested and they have your size, it will be below. I can't tell if this is a boiled wool blazer or not, but it is a very easy blazer to find. Something like this from Quince would really do the trick and give you a very similar vibe. And the outnet, J. Crew, and Mango all have options. What I think is part of the outfit that you cannot skip just to get the same vibe is the hat right? The hat is what is making this outfit kind of stick out in my opinion. Besides the fact 
that she used different colors or different shades of brown. The hat just makes it a bit different. It's not expected. And I, I don't know. I just love the hat. So if you love that element of this outfit, of course, you can find it on Amazon. But you can go really traditional and get one from Brixton and Bloomingdale's. All have fabulous options beautiful leather riding gloves um, in blue from Wolfenbanger would mimic the ones that she has on. It's just fabulous. So good. I really like this outfit if you can't tell. And then places like Sam Edelman, Steve Madden, or even Lothar Randall have an option for these boots. You don't have to have a Louis Vuitton purse. Any brown purse will do because brown is very much on trend right now. They are very easy to find, like extremely at this point. <laughs> If you prefer the way that she styled it, you could use any one of those suits and all you need is a really cute hat. It doesn't have to be a green baseball cap, right? If you despise the Yankee cap, you could wear something else. If you're from California or from Atlanta, you want a Braves, the Atlanta Braves cap. I'm going to go, you know, with the Yankees, obviously, but any of these will do. I always feel like the new era hats work better from my big old head or... 47, is that a brand? <laughs> I know that's what I'm looking for. But if you want a green hat, of course, I'll put them in the description box. And she has on a Chanel belt, darling, but it doesn't have to be Chanel. <laughs> it could be something like this from Bits Camuto, or even something like this from Amazon. And by this time, you know where to get a good clutch bag. It doesn't have to be Bottega. I personally have Mantor Gabrielle, which is not cheap, but it's definitely cheaper than Bottega. But you guys, there are so many options. I will put some below if you're still looking for this type of clutch. And if you prefer this lady who likes a delicate heel and a top handle bag with a slick back bun, this full navy pinstripe skirt suit will do the trick. Throw on a red or burgundy bag with your favorite heel. This little bag from Demillier would really look good even though it's a different tone of red than she has its burgundy. It would look so good against this navy blue suit. Oh, so good. Put them all together, however you like, and you're ready to go. You know, I was on social media. I want to say YouTube or TikTok. Those are usually the two that I'm on. And people were talking about how sick of burgundy they are already <laughs> which i understand because i guess a lot of people have it um let me know are you tired of burgundy yet i personally don't have anything burgundy yet i'm really thinking about getting that bag that i showed you guys last week but i'm not sick of it yet even though admittedly i have seen a lot of people wear it but because in my opinion because it is a classic color that's usually worn but fall it won't be a waste for me to buy burgundy right now especially because next season it might not be as trendy and it might be harder to find the burgundy pieces you know what i mean anyway i'm talking a lot let me know if you are sick of burgundy or see people wearing burgundy yet i say all that to say that the reoccurring style element in these three outfits are the colors the shapes are different they all have on a blazer but the gray and the burgundy is such a trendy match that can really be considered a classic. I don't often look towards gray um, just because I don't love it on me, but burgundy, whoo hoo. I love it as opposed to black and burgundy because it does lighten it up a bit and it doesn't look so stark, if that makes sense. But these three women are essentially wearing the same thing, but uh, different, right? So we have a gray blazer and some burgundy accessories, which is, like I said, very easy to find. So if you're looking for some burgundy flats, Harris, Texas, Vince Camuto, and Dulce Vita have some fabulous options. Paige, Tony Bianco, and Jimmy Choo all have options. And depending on how much you want to spend or how much you're willing to spend, there are options for everybody. There are even burgundy boots from Star to Steve Madden to Reformation. And there are bags everywhere, right from YSL, to Mansar Gabrielle, to even Mango. I'll put some more options in the description box, but if you want a burgundy bag, now is really the time since it is at the forefront of fashion right now. And that's how I'm justifying buying the bag that I want. <laughs> that's my justification. And if of course you're looking for a gray suit, Mango, or Ritzia, there are very many options everywhere. Gray suit is not really usually that hard to find. There is nothing better in fashion to me than one, me seeing your personal style and wearing whatever the heck you want to wear, and two, being innovative and different 
with regular pieces and putting your little spin on it. When you are layering, you're maybe layering in a different way. You're using color differently. I love to see people step out of the box. And though these three outfits have a certain style element of denim and oversized um, clothing, I can appreciate how each woman styled this particular style element. While to make this a little more fall appropriate, you're going to need to put like a sweater or a turtleneck underneath it. I do appreciate that the denims do not match exactly. The width of the pant leg is extreme and I think that's fabulous. I am not a person that can wear all oversized at once. So her doing this and making it look really cool is just chef's kiss to me. Again, not my style, but I appreciate it on somebody else and what they did. How cool is it to not only layer a trench coat over a denim jacket, but to also button up the denim jacket to make the outfit more interesting. I also really appreciate the added detail of having the denim sleeve poked out a little bit from the trench coat. The buttoning of the denim jacket is adding shape. Going over a trench coat is adding layers. Having the denim jacket peek out from the trench coat is adding depth, right? So many elements that makes this outfit super cool. Now, if she were to just leave the jacket open, it would probably still look cool, but it wouldn't be as interesting. When you're getting dressed, it's really important to think for you, if it's your style, to think about what can make the outfit more interesting. That's something that I definitely have to practice as my style is really more streamlined and a little more Oh, glamorous, right? I'm going to wear a fur coat. I'm going to wear an off the shoulder top. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I would definitely like to practice giving my outfit a little more depth. And when I saw this, I almost threw my phone across the, the room. Okay. This is so interesting. And I would have never thought to do this. The last woman put the denim under the trench coat. She decided to put it and layer it over the trench coat which is absolutely adding more interest to the outfit. Taking this trench coat and scrunching up the arms, which is something that I love, because that always adds shapes to an outfit. The two different denims. While I'm a sucker for a Canadian tuxedo that matches, if you get the right tone of denim on top and bottom, it could look so good. And I feel like she nailed this. I also really appreciate that she decided to go with white accessories, white boots and a white bag because we're told so often that we're not supposed to be wearing white after Labor Day. So the white actually, in my opinion, kind of lightens everything up, right? She could have worn black or brown, which still would have been cool. I would like to see the brown, but the white just gives it a different element and I actually love it. When you're getting dressed, do you often think of how to add interest? Not only by layering, even though I think that's brilliant, but by the way, something might be buttoned up or maybe a way to wear the same thing you always wear, but different, right? Maybe turn something backwards, maybe use a shirt as a belt. Just get really creative and see what you come up with. I woke up this morning, checked my phone for the weather, and she told me that it was going to be in the 40s. It was in the 40s, and the high was 58. Fall has entered the chat. <laughs> this is what I did this week in New York City. Hey, girl, hey. So remember in the last vlog, we were supposed to look for those lipsticks. And today I'm going to go look for these Guerlain um, lipstick. I think that these are just absolutely fabulous. It's a little extra. And obviously I don't need this lipstick to do all of this, but it's so cute. I either want the tortoiseshell one. I wanted the gold one, but it might be sold out because I think that it's just so like classy and a little glamorous. And then I'm thinking about this one um but i don't know if it's too shiny or too gaudy Eh, what am i saying 
It's shiny. I love shiny. <laughs> and then I had to rush home because I forgot I had a meeting, blah, blah, blah. So because I didn't get a chance to do it that day, we're going today. We're going to Bloomingdale's and we're going to see what else is there, obviously, because what's the point of going to Bloomingdale's and just seeing that one thing? <laughs> but hopefully they have the lipstick that I'm looking for. remember that velvet suit I talked about in another video from Good American? This is it in real life and it's so pretty. I can't find the pants or the other color but I would definitely love to wear a velvet suit. It's great for the holidays. But they're going to be more suit like. Hmm. Either way, I think I still like it. Remember when I said I came here for the lipstick? It's not here. They do. They do not uh, sell it here. We went through so much traffic to get here, and now it's not here. So we're just gonna look around and see what else I can see. Okay, so super random because we usually talk about fashion here. But I want to do my whole bed over. The problem is I can't buy a new bed right now. When I get home, I want to show you guys this like green uh, comforter that I got. And let me know what your thoughts are as far as it, if it matches or not. But I would love to have a bed this color. But anyway, when we get home, we'll discuss it more. I just wanted to give you a reference point. Hey girl, hey. So this week, guys, I really didn't do much. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I didn't really leave the house that much because my hair needs to be done. <laughs> I cannot get a hair appointment until the end of October or the beginning of November. It's a new person doing my hair and I'm hoping because it is so far out and she doesn't have any appointments that they are good with my hair. So I'm going to get a sew-in, um, but like I said, it won't be for a few weeks. Plus, I need to give my own hair a break. But anyway, I didn't do much because my hair looks terrible. <laughs> and that's why I have my hair wrapped up. I used to do this all the time, um, and I just said, you know what? I'm going to try it again just for now until I figure out what to do with my hair. But the other day, my husband texted me and randomly asked me if I wanted to go see Stanley Tucci. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. Okay, buddy. But he randomly found some tickets to go see this man <laughs> at Madison Square Garden, which I think is hilarious because when you think that they're not listening, they're actually listening. Like, how does he know that I like Stanley Tucci? Was he listening when I was talking or did he watch my last vlog? <laughs> so we did go see him, but on our way there, we ran into the Victoria's Secret fashion show, which I completely forgot about because it was at Madison Square Garden and so was Stanley Tucci. When I'm telling you, there was a huge crowd and a big screen. There were models. I missed Jasmine Tooks. Tooks? Tooks. <laughs> I missed her, which was annoying. I had to leave early, so I didn't get to see Tyra. But we did get to see Cher, which is crazy. Cher is almost 80 years old, okay? And let me tell you something. Sis was looking good you hear me but yeah so is new york you go for one thing and you run into another What drew you to New York? You've always been a huge fan of history. Yeah. And you said there was something about the cobblestones being ballast from these ships that came over yeah. from Spain or somewhere. I didn't pay attention after page 30, but yeah. it was, it seemed like you're, you, 
this place has a heartbeat that you were drawn to and you were all you said you always wanted to move here you knew that yeah i did when i was a kid i mean living in westchester you know we didn't we didn't travel a lot we went we lived in italy for a year which was an incredible experience when i was 12. um but i knew the first time that i came here that i wanted to live here and i moved here after university i went to suny at purchase and came oh, here yep. thank you thank you <laughs> thank you and seeing Stanley Tucci was very interesting. I didn't realize he was from Westchester, um, a New Yorker, right? Love that for us. <laughs> so I wanted to show you two quick things. I wanted to show you um, the comforter or the um, the green that I was thinking about to change my bed. My whole room needs to be done over. It needs like a, some updating. If you watched my videos during June, you saw that I updated my vanity. And now I need to do it for my bed. I need to, or I would like to reupholster the bed because I can't buy a new one right now um, for several reasons. But I feel like reupholstering the bed might be a bit difficult. I want it to be smooth now. I don't love the texture of this bed anymore. So we'll see how that works. If I do try to reupholster it, I will definitely show you. But I wonder what you think about green and gray. I would love to change the gray. <laughs> green and gray do go together, but I don't know if these two tones go together. In fact, I don't know that it's warm enough. I want my room to be warm colored. Um, and I think the green is, I don't know if the gray is with this color. So I wanna show you that. And then I wanna show you the lipstick that I got. Um, I just ordered it, you guys. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not supposed to go in the store. I just ordered it and I'm gonna show you that too. So I really love the richness of this color green. It's really dark and um, just beautiful, right? But green and gray. Again, no, though I do know they go together, I don't know if I like them together. I don't think that it's warm enough. I love how this feels. It's not a, a comforter. I just got um, some pillowcases just to see. Let me know what you think uh, about that color combination because I'm definitely doing this over. I just... Ugh. I'm not happy with this bed. I just don't want this anymore. I want it to be nice and smooth, but... Little by little, we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think about that color combination um, or should I just lean all the way into it and get this in taupe or in gray, even though I wanted something a bit warmer. I'm just over gray. They call it millennial gray. And this elder millennial, geriatric millennial is over gray, if I'm being honest. So let me know what you think there. And I wanna show you how really pretty this is. I sure do hope that it's coming up on camera, how sparkly this is, but I don't think it is. But it is so extra and so beautiful and so glamorous and so me. <laughs> I do like the color um, that I got. I'll show it to you in a second. It's just a, for me, a neutral color. I will probably get a nice deep red for the holiday season. Oh, look. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, oh that's so pretty. I will probably get a nice deep red for the holiday season. So got the Art Deco one that is on the way to me. But this is the first one I got. Look how pretty this is. Okay, let me show you how it opens. You just push this thing here. And when you open it, it's hard to do with one hand. It's a little mirror. How cute. And then when you want to close it, hard to do with one hand. Close it. And lock it back into place. Are you kidding? That's so cute. So then this is the color I got. It's just a neutral color, something that I could wear every day with a little lip liner. Obviously it looks different on everybody else, but this is just a neutral color for me that I would probably put a little clear lip gloss on. But this is a perfect little gift for somebody in your life. I feel like I wanna get one, I hope they're not watching, but I wanna get one for my mom, my aunt, my cousin-in-law, and my brother's girlfriend. They're gonna get different ones because they're all not like sparkly girls like me, but they have some different ones, you know? Anyway, I think I wanna get the, one of their gifts for the holidays. I hope none of y'all are watching. If y'all are watching, act like you didn't hear this. <laughs> so anyway, friends, I am sorry that there wasn't more in this video. So hopefully next week, I'll be able to do my hair a little better and get out. The problem is my hair looks fine. I could put it in a ponytail, but as soon as I work out, it's just gone. So I need some professional help and that's just what I want to do. Anyway, again, next vlog will be better and I will see you next week. One of the reasons I started talking about personal style on this channel is that I felt like we all were starting to look the same and that social media was really kind of pushing our style, pushing our shopping habits 
and I wanted us to look a bit different. There's been a lot of discourse lately on social media about how we all look the same, um, how fashion is quote unquote dead. And I feel like I want to give a little bit of pushback on that and have some discussion. I pretty much play devil's advocate. So do we all dress the same now or does it just seem like it? If you have been with me for a while, you know that I have been quite outspoken about us really leaning into our own personal style. But recently I've started to think about this in a different way. Now I'm just playing devil's advocate here. This is just for discussion. I would love to hear your thoughts. But I started to think, if you look at the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, even the early 2000s, you have an idea, right, of how each person or the, the trends that were present in each decade. If you were to close your eyes now and think about the 60s, you kind of have an idea of how these people dressed. Same thing with the other decades. Even if you weren't alive, like I wasn't alive in the 60s and the 70s, but I have an idea of the trends of how these people dress. With every decade comes a particular trend, we know that, and if you're a fashion lover, you know that's just how it is. And that got me to thinking, and I wonder if that's what we're looking at as far as everyone looking the same right now. Is it that we look the same, or is it just the trend of the decade? And since Social media is such a big part of our lives. We simply are noticing it more. In the 70s or the 80s, maybe folks didn't notice it because we didn't have as much access to each other. Again, I am in fact playing devil's advocate here. So I'm thinking it through. You know, let me know your thoughts. Because I do definitely think that a lot of us do look the same. Um, even amongst influencers that I am definitely including myself in, you can kind of tell that a lot of us shop at the same places and we get an inspiration from the same places. This is really why I started doing the fabulous fashion finds because I wanted to, for myself, find something different than everyone else. Um, not that I don't mind sharing because obviously if I minded, I wouldn't show you, but I wanted to give us more options, right? So we can really not look the same but were the influencers of old like the models and the movie stars um were they not wearing the same thing as well for example the model off-duty look in the 90s was a big thing right there was no social media there was no youtube there was no tiktok no instagram but somehow they all looked very similar in fact a lot of these outfits look almost identical. They most certainly influenced a generation of people. And even now, the trends that are happening, they are influencing how people dress today. So did they all look the same or was that just the trend of the times? And then I did start to think about this a little deeper. There was a time when you can tell where somebody was from. So though we were all wearing the same type of trends, each place had a different flair, different swag. New York was different than DC. DC was different than LA. We all had similar similar trends but wore it differently. For example, if you were from New York back in my day, <laughs> you could have been wearing Tim's or the 5411s or the Uptowns, what some people call Air Force Ones, what are called Air Force Ones. But I believe in Cali, in LA, you guys were wearing the Nike Cortez. Again, Correct me if I'm wrong, the late 90s, early 2000s, but I feel like that's what I remember my peers wearing in California. But even if it wasn't, it was something different than what we were wearing because they had a different swag. So though we all had a general outfit of trends, whether it was baggy jeans, whether it was like a clueless type of situation, we had a base but made it our own per city, per country, per culture. Now, I definitely feel that it is harder to distinguish where everyone's from. Everyone kind of wears what they see on social media. Cities, countries, and cultures have definitely crossed over to all of us. I would even say that this phenomena has crossed between countries. When I was in England a few months ago, if I didn't know where I was, I would think that a lot of these kids just got off the four train someplace in Crown Heights in New York, right? The same thing when I was in Milan, the kids were definitely dressed very similar 
to the kids here. Now I'm not saying who started or who didn't start it, but they 100% look all the same. And then I thought about it even deeper. I've been thinking a lot about those special people who really have got a grip on their personal styles and don't look like any of us. For example, these two men are from Germany, born and raised, but their ethnicity, where their family is from, is from the Congo. So you could see in their style just the way they look and how they move, that they are both heavily influenced by their nationality and by their ethnicity. Who do we have here today? Akikuma. Akikuma. Where are you guys from? Born and raised in Germany. What do you do that your outfits are a piece of art? It's the only way to describe it. Really appreciate it. I mean, our background is from the Congo. In the Congo, you have the SAP. It's a huge culture in the Congo. People who live in poor conditions but dressing so well. And somehow we adapted it because, uh, I mean, it's part of our culture. It's art. That's how I see it. Is it vintage? Is it new? What are you wearing? Everything vintage, actually, yeah. It's actually not that we find the pieces. The pieces always find us. How is your styling process at work? Sometimes you have a blazer for a year at your home. You don't have something to fit or to, or to match with it. Yeah. And then you find some nice pants and all of a sudden you know, okay, that's the outfit I want to go with. And what inspires you? Bring part of a culture to our style, to living. I mean, we were bo- born and raised in Germany. Mm-hmm. But we have the African culture as well. So is it, we're building a bridge between Africa and, yeah. and, and Europe. Are you like ever inspired by music or film? Most of all vintage films. Old films where the people dress very good. Mm-hmm. Mostly the 70s, okay. 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can see that for sure. 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a whole mood board only with movies. Like a screenshot yeah. every time I watch a movie. Yeah. And then I collect it. I had a feeling that's why I asked the question. (laughs) This is what I mean when I say that personal style evolves from who you are. This is the epitome of not getting influenced by anyone else's style. Um, And I think this is just fantastic. Again, you might not connect with the style, but it's important to be able to see where their style comes from and why they have such a unique style and a unique voice when it comes to how they present themselves to the world. So if you don't have access to this information, you don't know where personal style comes from, you are more likely to be heavily influenced by what you see on social media. So I pose this question to you. Do you think that we are heavily influenced by what we see as a community, um, as a world community, and that's why we all look the same? Or is it because of what's trending and clones and people being influenced by trends is not a new thing. There are no wrong answers because I'm literally just thinking it through (laughs) for myself. So just let me know. Tell me what you think. I am very, very interested. So do we really all dress the same? Is fashion dead or is it just trend cycles and social media? Speaking of letting influencers influence your shopping habits, here are some fabulous fashion finds for this week. So in this week's fashion finds, I definitely have a mix of a lot of accessories, but I have a mix of higher and lower. These, unfortunately, for those of you who don't want to spend money, are a bit higher. (laughs) They are less than, say, a pair of Celine sunglasses, but they are definitely more than Amazon or a pair of Key. These are fabulous, though, and I had to show you. During fashion week, I noticed that a lot of us had those YSL aviators and I love mine I have two or three pair but I was like oh so we're all gonna wear these huh (laughs) we're all gonna wear the same sunglasses and I'm not gonna stop wearing them I pay good money but I was definitely looking for something different and these are so cool to me if you are a kind of person that likes to leave your sunglasses on the ones in the middle are top notch I do that often I know some people think it's rude but sometimes it's part of the outfit (laughs) I've showed you this bag from anthropology before but I believe I showed you it in green and now because brown is the color of the season they have it now in brown if you are a person that likes a nice bag but doesn't like to spend too much money anthropology often has these great quality bags for a cheaper price now while a lot of them will not be leather they will be a decent quality and they will look so cute i think this is a very very cute bag if you are trying to save some money if you are not trying to save money this bag is stunning the oversized aspect the gold details the snake print 
I think it's just a banger. Again, it's not cheap, but sometimes you got to spend money for the beautiful things. I will leave this link below, but I think it is just, uh, I think it's just fabulous. I used to have and look at Brinker and Eliza jewelry often. And for some reason, I stopped years ago. You know how on your phone, the iPhone, it pops up some old picture and an old picture of a screenshot I had from Brinker and Eliza popped up again. And I said, wait a minute, I forgot about them. So I love these two necklaces. I love a statement necklace and earrings. Also, I just loved, I was about to get into it, but I love everything sparkly. But I feel like these two would really work for so many reasons. I love the one on the left because I think it will look great on a t-shirt like she has it. And then the one on the right is fabulous for a long sweater dress, like a turtleneck sweater dress, just to give it some, um, some depth and some interest. If you forgot about Brinker and Eliza, go check them out because I know I did. So this bag is Marmite, as I know a lot of the English would say, right? It's either you love it or you hate it. I think that it is so cool and I know that it is very affordable. It is under $200, I believe, and this thing is leather. So I can understand why you would hate it because the shape is super weird, right? It's so weird. But I think it's different. And if it goes with your personal style and you're looking for something different and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you want a leather bag, this is a great option. In fact, this website has several options if you want a beautiful leather bag. This one is a little more streamlined, a little more palatable, but I still think it's clean and gorgeous. And again, it's leather. This bag comes in several, in fact, both of these bags come in, in several different colors. So last week I showed you this brown or a brown suit from Banana Republic, which is very streamlined and gorgeous. But if you are a person that's a little more trendy and you want a brown suit and you want something different, this one is a great option. The way it buttons, the added detail on the cargo pants. If you are a trendy girly, this is for you. So I have been looking for some more um, options for the folks who are in need of extended sizes. Extended sizes and also petites. And I'm going to tell you, you guys, it has been a hard road. If you haven't noticed, I haven't been mentioning extended sizes as much because the things I find are horrible. Like I just, uh, it's just terrible. And I don't like to give you what I don't like. You know what I mean? I don't want to say, Hey, buy this even though I think it's trash. So I said all that to say that I recently found this website called Red Dolls and I am apparently quite late to the party because everyone says this stuff is great, but they have cute things. And the sizes go from a size two, I believe, to a 5X. What I mean inclusive, that is extremely inclusive. And what they have is cute because this suit is adorable. And I just picked up the first thing that I saw, but they have a lot of cute things. Imagine this with some red accessories or some gold accessories. And it doesn't matter if you're a size two or a size five X, you will have something at Red Doll. I know they recently have been going through some issues if they might close down or not. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But if you are looking for a different place to shop and you are a person that's in need of extended sizes, go look at Red Dolls. I absolutely should have put these next to the sunglasses earlier. I don't know why I didn't, but these are cheaper. These are from Jimmy Farley sunglasses and glasses, and they look very much like the first pair of glasses that I showed you, but they're about half the price. So if those are too much for you, these will work just as well. And the last thing I have to show you is this beautiful bag from ASOS. It is suede. I have got to stop sleeping on ASOS. This is such a good little bag. Of course, it's a decent price. They do have it in red and black, but the red and black doesn't look as rich. This definitely looks like it is more than what they're charging. So of course, I will leave that in the description box. That's this week's fabulous fashion finds, and I'll see you next week. So starting in November, this channel is going to see a bit of a change. We're not taking anything away. We're still recreating outfits. We're still doing, you know, the month of report and all that. But I want to add, I built my videos in a way that I'm able to, mm, that I'm able to add different topics and add different aspects of fashion and lifestyle. So I want to take a little more advantage of that. 
And there's a few things that I want to talk about, things I want to show you, whether it's my hair, which has been a, it's been an issue, my skincare, um, and just different topics and not necessarily what you think. I just don't want to show you skincare. I want to talk a little bit deeper about it, but also, like I said, not taking away from what we usually talk about. And I would like to know what else you would like to talk about or what else can I include? I will also be including more things that I actually buy. I want to show you the things that I find in my wardrobe and the new things. I don't always show you that. And I would like to incorporate a little more, you know, just more variety, but also still very much doing the things that we all already love. So let me know. Give me some things that you want to talk about. I already have a, a list. Every time you guys make a suggestion, I write a list and I have things in my head and plans to put them in to action. But with me, it's always going to be a little different just because I don't like to get bored. <laughs> so my point is, let me know some things that you would like to see on this channel. So there it is again. We are at the end and I appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I'll see you in my next video.